Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I'm going to talk about lighting for pet boa constrictors. I've got been getting a lot of questions about this and I've seen that there are some websites and forums where they indicate that using full spectrum bulbs is necessary for optimal boa health. So today I'm just going to provide my perspectives on this. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming BOA videos. There have actually been relatively few studies of the effect of UV light exposure on snakes' health. So a lot of what we have to go by is just anecdotal, based on he said, she said stories about peepers' uh, supposed exper experience. There's actually just a few studies which have looked at effects of UV on health of snakes, and they actually use vitamin D levels as an endpoint. So that's what they're looking at to indicate that the UV is having an effect. It's actually been quite widely demonstrated in other species, including humans, that there is some relationship between exposure to UV and vitamin D levels. And of course we need vitamin D, it you know, plays a key role in calcium metabolism. So could lack of UV lead to low levels of vitamin D, which may have health effects? There's actually two studies which are, have looked at this in snakes. One of them is in corn snakes, another one is in ball pythons. And it's this study in corn snakes that these sites which go on to the necessity of these full spectrum bulbs like to cite. And I'm just briefly going to give you a synopsis of this study. I'm just going to look at my notes so I don't get this wrong. The study is uh, published in 2008. The author is Asierno, and I'll put a link to the where you can go and you can check out the abstract for this study on, in the description below this video. So go check it out, read the papers, make your own conclusions. But what this study did is they took a total of 12 corn snakes and they divided them into two groups of six. And so they, for six of them, they did not give them any UV light. Uh, the other six got UV light provided by a full spectrum bulb. And they did this for a total of 28 days. Um, before they started the UV treatment, they took blood samples from all of these snakes and they got a baseline level of vitamin D in the blood. And after the 28 day study period, they took additional blood samples and they looked at the vitamin D levels in the blood. And what they found is that at the beginning, before the UV exposure, the vitamin D levels were similar between all the animals. After the 28 days of UV, the group exposed to the UV had about three and a half times increased levels of vitamin D. The group that did not get the UV had similar levels, so the vitamin D levels did not increase. So this suggests that in corn snakes anyway, there is some relationship between UV exposure and vitamin D levels. And so there's another study similar that was done in ball pythons, and this is by the authors uh, Headley and Eatwell, uh, and they published it in 2013, and I'll put the link in the description below this video. But they did a similar experiment. They had 14 ball pythons. They took blood samples at baseline to measure the vitamin D levels. And then they divided into two groups. Uh, six of them got the UV exposure. Eight of them did not get the UV exposure. I'm not quite sure why they didn't divide it into seven and seven. But what they saw uh, after UV exposure, um, and this was a 70-day day period. This is longer than the corn snake study. But they saw there was no difference in the UV after the exposure period versus the baseline level. So it appears that UV did not lead to increases in vitamin D in ball pythons like it did in corn snakes. Okay, so what is the, what's the big deal about this? What is the take home message? How important is vitamin D levels as a predictor of health in corn snakes? That's the you know, big question here. And I tried to find what the baseline levels of vitamin D are in healthy corn snakes. And of course, that statistic is impossible to find. I'm not sure if anyone has actually defined that. You know, if you go to the doctor and they take blood and they look at levels of different things in your blood, they have healthy levels that they can compare to to see if your level is too high or too low. And that unfortunately doesn't appear to exist for corn snakes. What I really would like to see is if there's any health impacts 
of the increased levels of vitamin D. For example, did the increased vitamin D lead to longer lifespan in these corn snakes? Did it lead to larger litters or greater reproductive success? And were there any health issues in the animals that weren't exposed to vitamin D? Another thing to consider is that vitamin D can also be obtained from the diet. Sunlight exposure isn't the only way that humans or corn snakes can get vitamin D. So even if these animals that have a lower level of vitamin D are less healthy than their UV exposed counterparts, this could potentially be made up by supplementation in the diet with vitamins. UV exposure can also have potentially dangerous effects. Of course, UV is known to be carcinogenic and exposure to sunlight is one of the main risk factors for skin cancer in humans. So if, you know, if I was deficient in vitamin D, I would much rather take a vitamin pill rather than go out in the sun and get burned and premature aging, etc. And we also see that vitamin D apparently is not synthesized in ball pythons with UV exposure. So this might be a species difference between the corn snake and the ball python. Maybe the corn snake is more diurnal, it goes out in the light more, versus ball pythons kind of hide in burrows underground. And so where boa constrictors fall, you know, I, I can't say. Maybe they're more like ball pythons, but you know, who knows? The data is just not available as far as I know. And then, of course, we have to look at the anecdotal evidence of many, many thousands of corn snakes have been produced in the United States in the last few decades with no exposure to UV at all. And they seem to be doing healthy, living normal lifespans. Um, it's not necessary, at least in the case of these animals, for them to have um, UV in order to have optimal health. And you might say, well, you can't really say that because you'd have to do a head-to-head -head comparison over the lifespan of the animal. And that would, be, that would be great data. If people could take hatchling or neonate snakes, raise you know, half of them with the UV, half without, and show a meaningful health benefit, you know, larger litters, better breeding success, that would be great data. Although that study would take many years, I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. And honestly, I don't think that's even necessary um, you know, because of this wealth of anecdotal evidence that we have of snakes, including boas and corn snakes, which seem to be doing just fine without UV. And they don't have any diseases that would be caused by low vitamin D levels. So we also have to look at the biology of boa constrictors, the behavior, in the wild, boas typically will hide. They don't just sit out in the open and bask in the sun all day like some reptiles. They're going to hide you know, in trees and under uh, logs and things like that. Um, and that's I've seen in captivity, of course, my boas spend most of the time in their hiding places in the dark. So even if they did have UV exposure, they wouldn't be exposed because they're in a dark hiding place. Boas also tend to be, or a lot of them I should say, tend to be either nocturnal, they come out at night, or they're crepuscular, meaning they come out in the early morning, in the late evening, when the UV light is not nearly as strong as in the middle of the day. In fact, I remember going to this really nice exhibit at the Bronx Zoo when I was a kid, and they had this, uh, the exhibit was called The World of Darkness. And basically, you'd go in, you see the nocturnal animals, they only had barely enough light for you to see the animals, so it was nice and dark in there. And one of the animals they had on display was a boa constrictor. You know, so the boa constrictor was doing fine, living in the dark, or, you know, not quite 100% dark, but it was pretty dark in there. Um, so, based on its habits, I would say that it doesn't seem uh, logical that, uh, that a nocturnal species would need exposure to ultraviolet. I wanted to also provide some context on use of full spectrum bulbs for boas from the established literature on keeping and breeding boas. And of course, one of my favorites is The Reproductive Husbandry of Pythons and Boas by Ross and Marzak. I highly recommend it. It's a little bit old, but the information is still really relevant. And so in the section that they have on lights, they go on to talk about full spectrum bulbs that they've been used for some reptiles like desert lizards and tortoises. Um, however, the benefit of fluorescent lights in, in the reproductive husbandry of voids has not been established. A great majority of herpetologists do not use the lights and a survey uh, of zoo, herp zoo herpetologists 
concluded that they're neither necessary nor useful in Boyd reproduction, including pythons and boas. And then they go on to say that the UV lights can actually be dangerous because they must be used with extreme caution as UV radiation in this wavelength may be harmful to the eyes and skin. It's also known to cause cancer by damaging DNA. So although it might have some benefits for vitamin D in corn snakes, you gotta take the potential negative effects with that you know, potential benefit, if it even is a benefit. And then from more recent, our favorite boa guide, the uh, complete boa constrictor by Vin Russo. So what he has to say on this is, boa constrictors do not require any special lighting and in fact could thrive in captive conditions with very little light. And so then he goes on to describe, he, he lights the room on a 12 hour on, 12 hour off cycle. And you know, it's good to have the lights so that you can enjoy your snakes and you can see them. It's really not necessary for their overall health. And this is what I do. Basically, I use room light, uh, you know, ambient room light provided by fluorescent bulbs on the ceiling of my room, which I'll show you in a minute. I don't have any individual lights in the snake cages. I don't have any kind of full spectrum bulbs. I don't, you know, again, I don't think it's necessary based on experience of many, many successful boa keepers, based on my own experience with, you know, breeding boas for several decades, successful with challenging species like Suriname and Peruvian red tails, breeding them repeatedly year after year. So I'm not concerned about not using these lights for my snakes. Again, I can't conclusively say that there's not a single positive benefit of using them. The studies just don't exist. You know, if someone was gonna go do a study comparing um, boas raised with no UV versus the UV lights, I'd be interested to see if there is any impact on the breeding or litter size or something like that. But based on all this anecdotal evidence, I don't think that it's really worthwhile to invest in these types of lights because I don't think there would be a benefit uh, to using them for my boas. Here's a look at the fixtures that I use in my snake room. So these are just basic fluorescent fixtures. They are four feet long and you can see there's four bulbs in each fixture. And I have two of these mounted to the ceiling in the snake room. The light bulbs come on for 12 hours a day during most of the year, but then during the cooling period, which happens from late November through February, they're only on for 10 hours a day. And these aren't any special full spectrum bulbs. These are just basic fluorescent fixtures available at your local hardware store. Another thing to consider is that a lot of these websites making the claims of the benefits of the UV lights for snakes are set up by the companies that make the UV light bulbs. So it's a little bit like hearing from the tobacco companies that smoking does not cause cancer and it's perfectly safe. You really have to take it with a grain of salt. The other thing that we need to think about is that do these lights really even mimic the sun and you know have a, a healthy profile of UV rays that's anything like the sun. And so I'll say offhand that it's proven that UV exposure for certain reptiles like tortoises and a lot of lizards is very beneficial and really necessary. And the majority of people who are successful breeding tortoises and some lizards, they keep the animals outside for all of the year or at least part of the year so they can soak up that natural sun. You know, they're not breeding them inside their house under these full spectrum UV bulbs. Based on the much lower intensity of the light produced by these bulbs, as well as differences in the actual spectrum of UV they produce compared to the sun, I'm really skeptical that they would be able to mimic the sun and have the same benefits. A lot of people, a lot of you know, bulb manufacturers throw around these terms like full spectrum, trying to convince you that it's the same as the sun, when clearly it's not. Unfortunately, there's no regulations that govern uh, manufacturers of these bulbs, and they can say whatever they want about it. It doesn't mean that it mimics the sun or it has you know, a, a health benefit. They would be similar to the sun for the species that require UV, such as tortoises and some lizards. So the last point I wanted to discuss was, well, what if you want to use lighting in your boa's cage, not for supposed health benefits, but rather just because you enjoy looking at the boa and the lighting 
makes the boa more visible. And I would say this is completely fine. Personally, I wouldn't really even worry about the full spectrum. I would just get your basic fluorescent fixture and stick it in your boa's cage with the bulb. You can use a timer so it comes on for 12 hours during the day and then goes off at night. Or you can even have a manual switch if you just want to turn it on for a couple hours to enjoy the snake. You know, the boa is likely going to be hiding much of the time anyway. So, you know, whether the light is on or not, you know, the boa probably doesn't care. As long as it has access to that dark hiding place. I wouldn't recommend forcing a boa to stay out in the light because that's going to, you know, totally stress it out. So that's my thinking on full spectrum lights for boas. I, again, I don't plan on using full spectrum bulbs. I can't conclusively say that there's no benefit to using these things. But, you know, based on all the anecdotal evidence and the few studies which have been conducted, I don't think it supports getting these types of lights for your boa. You know, that being said, if you guys have any experiences you want to relate, I'd like to hear if you use these bulbs or if you feel differently, you know, please comment below. As always, I hope this video was helpful. Reach out to me if you have any questions or comments via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.